Welcome back to Axel Coral Live. We're broadcasting from the Kamabi Research Station here in Curaçao and welcoming you to a very special Coral Live Ask Me Anything. And that is a, this is a sponge special. Special. Yeah. <laughs> special. 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 <laughs> yes. I'm very happy. Jasper, thank you so much for, for, for joining us again. Uh, and to take us through the wonderful world of sponges, yep. which I think we're going to get to in a, in a bit. But this is also quite a, an exciting live broadcast for us because we've got um, Ben and Lucas who are going to go yeah. and get, get us some live uh, pictures from the reef as we yeah, talk. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, so we have Ben here. I don't know See you guys in Yeah. And then Lucas. And uh, they will uh, try to get some live footage. Yeah of some of the sponges over there. Yeah. Uh, basically the reef starts real close to shore. So it's not a far swim. And directly when you go down, you will have your corals and your fish and your sponges. And then hopefully we can show you how sponges actually filter their water and, and pump it out again. And it will be amazing. It will be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I will not, I will not <laughs> explain more. You will see. It. You will see you something with colors and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> uh, just before we, 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 we get into everything, we um, have schools coming from um, Bermuda, the UK, Switzerland, USA, and Canada. Um, we have um, a big shout out to Dillon Valley Elementary School. Wow. Um, special, special mention for them. Yeah. Um, got some really brilliant questions. Uh, coming coming through already. This is going to really test the sort of like the limits of your marine biological knowledge. Uh, but uh, before before we, we get to that, you've got um, an aquarium um, for us. We've got the ah uh, everything everything set. Everything set. Well, good luck. <laughs> make good luck, make guys. make it brilliant. <laughs> there they go. What a job, eh? Yeah, it's tough. You know, yeah. tropical island, going and looking at amazing sponges. Yeah, super hard. Uh, no, it's it's um, it's a brilliant job. I think that everyone that uh, has the. Bye, guys. Bye. The opportunity to uh, see this underwater world is uh, is just happy. Is this happening? Well, yeah. hopefully this will give um, our, the students watching it a, a taste um, for what's going yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, but because we have a, a, a sponge special today, yeah. uh, you've brought some of your sponges yes. uh, into, into this aquarium. Uh, tell us, I mean, because sponge, sponge is, is something that you have in the bathroom. You do. Uh, and they used to be the, the animal. Uh, uh, so sponge is an animal? It's an animal, yeah, okay, so that's a good, a good thing to know. A sponge is an animal. It's actually our oldest uh, ancestor. So be before the sponges, there was really no other multi-cell animal. There were only bacteria on Earth and, and maybe some uh, one single cell algae. And then the sponge is basically, you know, your oldest grandpa, grandma that we have. Wow, so we're descended from these wonderful yes. creatures. Yeah. And then you do have the, uh, the bath sponge type sponge. Yes. Uh, they really look like that. Uh, they're yellow, they're, they're SpongeBob, SpongeBob-like. Okay. Uh, but here I thought it's interesting to also show uh, you that there are many different types of sponges. And mm -hmm. probably this is not what you would expect to be a sponge. No. Um, they're very thin. Uh -huh. uh, so this one, for example, here I put my finger. Yeah. And this one and that one is maybe even only one uh, millimeter thick. Really? And they generally live inside uh, the reef. So you can't even see them. Inside the reef? Yeah. So basically, uh, if you would swim across the reef and you would look, and you would have like one square meter of reef, there can be up to eight square meters of reef underneath it because the reef ah, is a, a structure. It's a honeycomb type. Yeah, it's okay. like your, your intestines really. I mean, th there's a lot of, lot of holes and cracks and caves and crevices and uh, they appear to be very dark and, and lonely places on the reef but in fact if you if you shine your light you will mm -hmm. see all of these beautiful colors um, uh, inside there's not only sponges living in these cavities there's 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 tons of different animals uh, but sponges kind of dominate it wow uh, yeah and um, Ellie, just have you got the live feed coming have you you've, you've got them swimming along getting towards the, the sponge 
Um, we're going to have to, we can't quite see in, in, inside the production tent. Maybe if you turn the monitor around, uh, we can see them. Sort of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, there them. we go. That's yeah. a nice, nice, nice picture of, of Ben there heading, heading towards the roof. Just, just let us know when they, when they, when they start getting their colours out. It's very mysterious. Yes, yeah, but, you yeah. know, when they get their colours out, whatever that means. Is it, is it is a, a bit of a treat that we're going to see? It's, it has something to do with that you can actually visualise how sponges are pumping. And then I can tell you a bit about yeah. it. I mean, we, we have this uh, dye. It's a fluorescent dye. It's not harmful to the sponges. You can put the dye close to the sponge, and then it will suck in that dye, and it's fluorescent, so it's yellow. It's a real bright yellow. And then you can see uh, that sponges take up this dye and then eject it again. And basically, then you can see how they pump and how they are active on the reef. So, so these, these creatures are water pumpers, are they? Yeah. So basically, uh, uh, for example, this, this, this purple one or there, you see yeah. all of these sort of star shapes yeah. or sometimes volcano-like structures, right? Yeah. And these are the outflow openings. So this is basically where uh, the sponge uh, drops uh, his uh, whatever it wants to excrete. So yeah. all of the little holes that, that are there that are taking up the water, you, you can't see. They're too small. So basically ah. the whole tissue of the sponge is kind of like a seed. Okay. So it takes up water. And then it, it strips the water from whatever it needs to feed on. So that can be everything, can be bacteria, viruses, can be sugars, amino acids, whatever the sponge needs. And then it collects all its waste and excretes it uh, in these larger openings. So you, you also, for example, have sponges that look like a pipe or like a beaker. Yeah. Maybe you've seen them more often on the reef, eh? you mm -hmm. can see them. And then the hole in the middle is where everything comes out. Ah. It's not their mouth. It's not the mouth, but, but it kind of looks yeah. like it should be the mouth. Yeah. Ellie, how, how, how are we, we getting on? Okay, so nearing, I think. I think. Yeah. So when, I think we've got, got there, we've got some. See if we can, th okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got the. So I see a hand. A hand and. And that, you see that, that die now? Yes. Uh, see? So once he puts the die, just seconds after, it actually. Now, appears to pop out of that, that little hole you see. Okay. And basically what happens is that already about 90% of all the bacteria uh, are stripped out. So in a few seconds, sponges can take everything from the water column really, really, really fast. Wow. And then if you imagine, and uh, there's everywhere on this, I think it's one of the, the poles. Yeah. Uh, you see all kinds of different sponges, and all of these sponges do that. So they all pump. I think we're, we're moving around something else here difficult see i think we're moving around that yeah okay i can see a larger sponge now so this is more like a beaker sponge it's a bit difficult to see the shape from here but i think it's uh, it's a beaker sponge he puts the dye and then i don't know if you can see it from here but i guess now the dye is coming out Yeah, it, yeah. Do you want to okay. yeah, yeah, see, see it? See that? So that's the, you can see here clearly that this is a larger sponge, and the amount of dye flowing out is, is just amazing. They they can really um, filter liters and liters of water per day. Okay, I think I think they are we brilliant. I think we're we're, we're going. They 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 just signal that they're going to find a couple of other sponges. Yeah. So, so while while we're while they're they're swimming around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit of why is this filtering important? It's important because uh, what we found is that sponges are a bit of the, uh, the recyclers of the reef. Mm -hmm. So they're very important in uh, using food. So the, the reef basically is a very food poor environment. Uh, they actually call tropical waters deserts. They're, really? they're marine equivalents of deserts. Basically, you can see far means yeah. there's not a lot in that water. Right? Understood. Understood. If you go swim maybe in the European, northern European waters, it, it might it might even feel a bit dirty. But actually, there's more food in there than uh -huh. in the tropical waters. Now, what happens is that um, the little bit of food produced on the reef is produced by the corals, by the algae, basically the plants that can use sunlight, mm -hmm. photosynthesis to produce food. Now that food. You won't see because it's dissolved. It's it's sugars. 
ah. it's amino acids, it's proteins. But best example is if you put sugar in uh, in your cup of tea. Yes. You will taste it. It's there. You will f you will have the nutrition from the food, but you won't see it. So that's the food that is produced on the reef in that desert. Problem is, no one else can take that food. That's so a how? Yeah. So all of the animals that that cannot use sunlight, they need that food, but they cannot take it, except for the sponges. So these animals, very important, can take up all of that food, and instead of growing, because these are, I told you, they, they live inside mm -hmm. cavities, there's not a lot of space, everybody is fighting for a, a good spot on the reef, they uh, decided to change, to rejuvenate their cells. So what they do, instead of growing large, they stay young. So that's they not a bad they, idea. Yeah, they, that's a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and they can uh, also become very old because of that. So sponges are known to become hundreds of years old. And, and they so do that. Th yeah, sorry. Th Ali, just give yeah. us a wave. We don't want to miss anything, but give us a wave when, when, when we, we get close okay. to something else. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, yes, no worries, no worries. So, so uh, in eventually what happens is that um, if you want to survive in the desert, you need to be very efficient in using food and uh, everyone needs to take each other's waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the sponges, they take up food that nobody else can use. They turn it into cells. They divide their cells and throw the old cells away. Mm -hmm. This rains down on the reef as sponge poo, basically. Okay. Yeah? So it, it sounds dirty, but for other organisms, it's actually a nice piece of food. Yes. So what happens is that uh, these animals cannot live without the sponges because they cannot take the sugars, but they can take the, the poo of the sponge. That <laughs> an incredibly important role. Yes, because if they wouldn't be there, all of your uh, uh, crabs and worms. Oh wow! Uh, we, 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 live live television. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <laughs> they can't they can't hear us. Um, so we've got. Uh, oh yeah. So this is an example um, of one of those more encrusting sponges. Okay. Uh, so the, basically, the ones that we have here. So they're. They, they form a crust. You can see all the little uh, volcanoes. Uh, these are again the outflow openings. And if you look really closely, I, I'm not sure if you can see it uh, very good, but if you look really closely, you can see how the dye is taken up by the veins and then shot out uh, again by the the outflow openings. That's incredible, and, th and that's that's happening all 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 over the reef i mean that that's you know that is i mean ha well, some, sometimes you have to visualize these things right? okay. well, you can see it you can yeah. see these sponges but now you can really see what they do right with the dye and i think that's just amazing that you if you start to think about that all of these sponges all around the reef doing yeah. th exactly that you can start to realize that they really change the water column they strip out bacteria they give uh, corals uh, nutrition by giving them, for example, phosphates and nitrates. Everything on the reef is recycling each other's waste products. That's that's just in incredible. I mean, Ellie, just just uh, let us know if they're heading heading to to, to any uh, anything else or whether they're, 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 they're swimming back now. Yeah, I, I actually maybe this is also then interesting because we've, we've got some pretty cool questions coming as well. Just to okay. okay. Careful. Careful. Yep. Yeah. There we well, go. Right. Yeah. Um, all good to share, share the jetty with yeah. one and all. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to show you this because this is another type of sponge that, that you know, uh, you have never really thought of because it's super hard. It actually looks like a coral, and this is a uh -huh. stone sponge. A stone sponge? But it's actually made of glass. It's called a stone sponge, but it's purely made of glass. And this one lives at about 250 meters. How many feet is that? About 750. 750 yeah, feet. Yeah, 800, yeah. Down there, you can find these sponges. Made of glass. No way. There's so many different kinds. That's just, just incredible. I'm going to, oh wow, we've got, we've got, a, we're back, back, back on the reef. Um, I, I can hardly see that. Yes, but you want to get, try and get closer to, to, to the monitor in, in, in on the on the jetty. Okay, I see another encrusting sponge. Oh wow! Yeah, this is pretty cool. You can really see it, you know, shot out of the osmium. And if I'm right, it's actually, I think it's this sponge. 
the blue one is very common. I guess that they're a little bit deeper now then, because this sponge actually only occurs below 25 meters. So they're, they're about 25, 30 meters depth, maybe, along the, the slope. And then this one occurs everywhere. It's like a carpet, basically. And you see? What happens if there's another? Wow, you see that? That was really cool. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's just mind-boggling that yes, you can to, really to have this at the same time, out, right? Yeah, super active, nice. No, that, that, that I mean, it's just to have have that and to speak to you at the same time and have these ones. So, which 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 one was it? It was this one. Um, we call it uh, blue. <laughs> <laughs> we call this one really imaginative blue. naming system. Yeah, I, I now know what what the Latin name is, but uh, we didn't know for a long time. Um, because most of these sponges are, are yet to be described or are in the process of being described. Uh, and then uh, when we use them for feeding experiments, we kind of refer to them as uh, uh, orange, spiky, uh, brown, um, uh, fleshy, uh, pinky or so. Yeah. <laughs> Not very scientific, but... <laughs> so something. Ellie, keep us in touch. Are they, are they heading back or, they, or we've got one more demo to come? They're heading back. Okay. But we'll, we'll hopefully we'll, 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 we'll see them. Um, um, shortly, and uh, just this one, the, they've they've come back um, from just just behind us. Yeah, there's an iguana there. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is yeah. a sizable iguana. Uh, and there's a, there's an eel just down here. Yeah. So it's, it's it's all it's all happening. The iguana just behind <laughs> us is about sort of two 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 feet long. <laughs> so Ellie hopefully won't come into your tent to share it. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll take a vegetarian. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so nothing to worry about, no, Ellie. It's just a two-foot lizard yeah. just yeah. next door to you. Nothing to worry about. Um, so, sorry, going back to, uh, we've got some amazing questions coming through um, from uh, Dylan Elementary. Yeah. Uh, and we've got the first one is from Nicolette. And I'm going to really stretch your, your um, what part, uh, why are dolphins one of the smartest animals? Ah, so, okay. Um, well, dolphins, this is quite interesting, actually, because dolphins are mammals. Yes. Right? So they, they are not fish. Uh, uh, a whale and a dolphin are both mammals. So they are more related to uh, us than to fish, for example. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're keeping an eye on the, the big iguana that's coming our way. But it will just be interested in what we do. Um, so uh, dolphins um, have, have, have a, a quite sophisticated brain. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, for example, I don't know if, if, if they, the children know, but, but for example, a killer whale yeah. is not a whale, but it's a family of the dolphin. Really? Yeah. And uh, they're also known to be very, very intelligent. So uh, they're predators, mm -hmm. so they hunt. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've ever, ever seen these like, beautiful documentaries, but killer whales are really hunting in groups and they, they're really smart. And yeah. So and that, uh, yeah, that's talking different to than each being other fish. and yeah. communicating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we got very distracted <laughs> by this iguana. <laughs> Sorry, let's fo fo focus. Back yeah. Dol Dol dolphins. Okay. Yeah, dolphins. So um, I think that is the the answer to the question, really. That they are uh, they are mammals, though. So their brains has, have been developing a little longer, uh, better uh, than uh, than, for example, uh, a fish fish brain. Okay, so that's why they're smart. B bigger, yeah. more developed brains. Yeah. And compared to the sponge, which has a brain, does not have a no, brain. No, no, no. Actually, uh, sponges are the uh, what I said. They're, they're the oldest. Uh, yeah. So sponges do not have a brain, but they do not have any organ even. Uh, no. So they don't have uh, blood. They don't have a heart, lungs. These kind of things. They don't possess. Basically, uh, to put it very simple, it's a mouth and an and an uptake system. Yes. It's a sieve, and and that's it. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, so, next up, Sunny would like to know, what part of the ocean do jellyfish live in? I guess in, in, in all parts of the ocean. I mean, um, I have not been everywhere yet. Yet. <laughs> working on it, working on <laughs> it. Working on it. Uh, and actually, not a lot of people have been everywhere yet, but, but everywhere that I have... Are they people, I don't know. Well, there, there should be at some point. Um, We've got the Coast Guard. Yeah. It's all happening today. Iguanas, so, the Coast Guard, I'm live. We have Murray eels. Murray down. eels. We have fish there. In the uh, yes, and yeah. some grunts and sergeant majors down there. It's, it is. It is. This is very much coral live, and the iguana is climbing a tree. Yeah. 
Uh, but to get back to the yes. question, um, so jellyfish, um, everywhere that I have um, been, you see jellyfish. Even in the deep sea, I do some work in the, in the real deep sea, let's say more than a few hundred meters to even a uh, thousand meters deep, uh, there, there is always uh, jellyfish. Right, so ev everywhere. And yeah. um, Angel uh, would like to know... Yeah. Um, Hi, Angel. Hi. Uh, why did you decide to study animals? This, this is your life. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm happy that I chose this life, and I think that's also sort of the answer to the question, is that I think it's important um, you spend a lot of time during your life to work, yeah. Right, and if you can manage to do something that you really enjoy, and that you feel real passionate about, I, I guess that's that's sort of the most important thing there is. And then if you have a dream, maybe you want to become uh, a marine biologist, or maybe you want to become an actor or a writer or whatever you want to become. I think if you have that passion, if you feel that passion, you should just go for it. And then basically, um, it will. I, I hear some noises. Aha! Behind me. Welcome back. Come hey. on through. <laughs> Great uh, footage, guys. Yeah. Really nice. You know, the last one is really nice. That very special. Yep. Very, very special to have that. I mean, whilst we're just coming, coming up the beach, a quick question in. Um, you spend your life um, studying animals. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could ask the same question to, to Lucas about. Are there any animals that you're scared of? Um, I'm not so fond of things like worms and, and, and cockroaches and other crawling insects. Really? I, say, I don't know if I'm scared of those, but... Animals you might be scared of. Yeah. Animals you might be scared of. Or do you mean underwater? Underwater. Uh, underwater. Not really scared of. Yeah, I think I people might think about yeah. sharks. Yeah, or I, I, I guess you would say that, but I'm, I have respect for sharks. Okay. And, and I will be very gentle if they are in the water and I'm in the water. I, I definitely don't, don't want to you know, scare them or make them aggressive, but I'm not really you know, afraid because I know that they will not harm me. I would be more afraid of uh, people on jet skis and boats oh, on, yeah. the, on the surface because when you come up, they won't see you, especially if there are some waves. Yeah. So there's actually, I think... Uh, yeah. yeah. People are the most people. dangerous animal. <laughs> people are the... Again, we come Again, back we to come, come back to people are the yeah. most yeah. dangerous animal. But of course, I mean, you have... Um, you have dangerous animals. You have sea snakes. You okay. have... Uh, crocodiles. Bar barracuda. Ooh. Yeah. Crocodile. Well, I would be scared of yeah. crocodiles. Yeah. No, crocodiles. I mean, I will be definitely scared of crocodiles. No way. I will get I've out got of the water. <laughs> I've got a really big telling off um, in <laughs> Timor Leste where I went out on my own just to sort of like, you know, relax after a day's work a bit like this. I just sort of <laughs> swam out. And they, I, I got back in and I got a massive telling off from the community there saying you, that I'd gone out without a crocodile watch. Yeah, no, but, but oh, yeah. crocodiles, you know, the thing is, um, I know a shark won't eat me because yeah. I'm not one of his uh, food pellets. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think a shark is as, 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 as scared for me as I am as scared for him or respect to him. Uh, crocodile's different, eh? I mean, we are part of the food pellet of a crocodile. They eat us. <laughs> so, you know, once you know that, I would be afraid for a, wi a wild lion. Yeah. Um, these are top predators in, on land, so they yeah. will eat us. But sharks... You know, when we, when we, if you see, see Lucas or, or, we are pretty big fish too, huh? And then we have these, these things on us, so we, it's, make, uh, noises. we make noises. <laughs> yeah. Most, most uh, water animals will be very afraid to come close. And, and, and then it's, a, it's the surfers maybe in more, in, who look, might look like a seal, and that, that's where some of the shark attacks might come from. I guess that all, I'm not, 100% sure, but I guess that most, like 99.999% of all shark attacks are either uh, by uh, with surfers. Yeah. And then what you say is absolutely true. I mean, I'm not blaming the surfer, but the surfer, and he does, I think, also realize that when you're surfing, you're splashing, you're wearing a wetsuit, you do look a little bit like a seal, and splashing seal are a type of, like, they're they, they think it's, they're in trouble, they're yep. wounded, they're sick, so the shark goes for them. If you are spearfishing underwater, mm -hmm. um, that's also when sharks can attack. 
again logical if there's blood in the water or they hear the uh, the sounds of the, the the cracking bones of the fish they will come and, and charge they won't they're not there to charge you they're there to charge your <laughs> your catch yes it is basically. of course not very smart to have what many fishermen or spear fishermen do that they have their their baits or, or their fish what they call it at the belt <laughs> so you have it at the body well the, the shark is going for for the fish yeah. and by accident takes the a chunk. Off your leg. Yeah. Have you have you ever felt scared of something underwater? Definitely not of sharks. No. Snakes. Snakes and crocodiles. Snakes. Sea snakes, no. No. Quite calm. Uh, haven't dove with a crocodile yet. So nobody. <laughs> nobody has. Nobody has. <laughs> nobody is there to tell. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I knew one guy. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Brilliant. Well, just to say thank you so much again, it's, it's really, really special and, and it's a, a Coral Live first today to, to have, have that underwater footage um, go out live. So that's thank you. Thank you, what's our Thanks, pleasure? Guys. All the best. Yeah, take care. Thank you. See you guys. See you. Amazing. Well, thank, thank you again. And, and I hope you found that um, as, as special as, as we did. It was, it was for, for me, to, I mean, I, we, 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 the very, they very kindly went out this morning as well. But to see the, the role that distinctly that the, yeah. the sponge plays yeah. uh, on the reef really yeah. very very cool indeed well glad to be uh, able to show yeah. yeah um juan carlos would like to know um how do you think we can help improve the coral from school so they're sat at school mm. yeah obviously they've heard um stories that the coral reef is not in the best of you know health and is facing some stresses yeah what can they do to to help from a school point of view so i think I think it all starts with knowledge. Uh -huh. So we need to be aware, we need to be educated. Uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of children uh, at their ages that have never been diving before. Uh -huh. um, maybe they've seen it on television, but I think that it's very important to, to show in the classroom you know what is a coral reef? How does it look like? What? How does a, a deep coral? There's coral reefs in the in, in in the northern ICs too. I mean, there's so much to to see. First, you have to learn and, and to learn how it how it looks like, how it works, yeah. and only then um, you can also learn why things go wrong. Uh, unfortunately, it has a lot to do with with us, with humans, with human with, activity. With, yeah, I mean, we are with a lot of people on this world. <laughs> We use a lot of energy. We we also produce a lot of waste. We are also part of the environment. Yes. We are actually doing our biological role: eat and you know yep. produce waste. Um, at one point, you know, the system cannot handle it anymore. And and what you see now is that if you if you you know put. Okay, I I, I'm tr I will try to explain it. I told you this is a desert. Yes. Right. So in this water, there is like this little this little food and, yeah. and the whole reef is uh, developed on that little thing of food so there's very efficient recycling I told you now if you put a little bit extra you know it will be twice uh, okay. so every little bit of extra things you put in the water is an enormous increase if you have a rich North Sea and there's this much food and you add a little bit of extra it, it won't really notice right but here in this system, it's so vulnerable because because of the fact that it's actually a desert. So we've got a it's sort of a more fragile because the margins are so thin. Yes. Yes. That, that, that this is more susceptible to, to change. Yes. So so going back to to the questions is okay. So th there is this, and, and wherever you are in the world, you're contributing to yeah. that change. I think through carbon dioxide to warming and, and, and acidification. Yeah. What what. What can you do, or what can schools do to start to ch change the impact they're having on the reef? I think that uh, schools um, should be able to create awareness amongst the students. Okay. Um, that when you uh, might go on holiday, maybe to uh, a place where there's coral reefs, that you really are aware that you shouldn't, you know, drop anything in the water. Don't leave your waste out. Um, yeah, maybe at, at a, a later stage in their lives, uh, you know, you can make sure that when, you know, when there's uh, hotels built, that they have a proper way of, of getting their waste off. I mean, all these kind of things, it has a lot to do with awareness and, 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 and being aware that you as a human 
um, are, are, are not only here and breathe and eat, but you, you do also have an impact on your climate. And yeah, it's that word, uh, sustainable. We have, we have to be more sustainable. And on a school basis, I mean, could an example be that uh, the canteen serves more vegetables and less meat that there's a, or for the school bus, if there's uh, people living close, it's a walking bus rather yeah. than a real bus. Are there yeah. other things like that that, yeah. that that schools could think about? I mean, I'm, I'm from the Netherlands, uh, and, and one of the things that the Netherlands is really good at is biking. We do, we bike a lot. Yeah. Um, I live 25 kilometers away from my work, but sometimes I just go biking, uh, and, and that's, of course, doesn't have any impact on, on the on the environment. I don't I don't uh, emit uh, uh, gasoline, uh, so you know, walking, biking, eating healthy, making sure that, for example, in canteens, I don't know if that happens, but sometimes I see that there's a lot of plastic use to wrap okay. your forks and your knives in. Um, uh, yeah, maybe use less plastic, mm -hmm. different types of material. Yeah. So many things, a few, many yeah. things that we can yeah. do. So lots of things to think about um, on a school level. Um, so Hashra, coming coming back to um, the ocean, what do you like most about the ocean? Uh, I think the, the the one thing that all always attracted me is that I find it absolutely mysterious. I think this is just. I'm also a little bit not afraid of it, but I. It's so different than being on land. Yeah. Um, so I'm just amazed always by just how it looks. I, I, I want to know who's there. I find it. I find it one big exploration. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, yeah. No, everything perfect. you see is new, right? Almost. And I have to say, being here diving is not only the fact that you are, you know, underwater and you can breathe, and I love diving, but it's also the fact that you are really in the wild. There's no trails. There's no everything that's there is is you know wildlife. Um, yeah, where can you do that on on land? You have to re go really far to high mountains or Alaska or or anything to to get that experience, right? Yeah, so that's inc incredible. So it's, it's that sense of wildness you get in the ocean for sure, and 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 freedom. Freedom and also it's very quiet there. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I, I I love it. I love to be there. Nice. Uh, Brianna, um, with the world around us changing and developing so rapidly, do you believe that people would be able to protect um, deep sea corals? I mean, are we, we, we hear a lot about the shallow corals. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the deep reef that, that Pim was studying, so they're yeah. down to about 150, but you've also looked at even deeper ecosystems and habitats. Yeah. Are they being damaged by human activity? They are. Um, I have to say, not the ones that, that we now know of, because they're, 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 luckily they're protected. Um, nobody, uh, there's not a lot of people know that there is, there is reefs larger than the Great Barrier Reef on the shores of Scotland and Norway, yeah, uh, 200, 300 meters deep. There's enormous mountain ranges of deep sea coral reefs that look absolutely amazing. What we, what we do see is that there's so much area in the deep ocean that we have not even explored yet. Um, where we now see that if there has been some fishing going on, uh, some troll fishing, for example, you know, 10 years later, uh, nothing grows back. Um, mm -hmm. So that impact is, is real and it's, it's there to stay for a while. So if we don't, the, the problem is probably that we, we can't see. Uh, if something goes wrong here on the streets, uh, you know, the, the, the police or whoever can say, hey, don't do that, uh, I'll... Yeah, give you a fine or whatever. Here, yeah, I mean, do we see the revive? We have no idea what happens there. And so you're saying there's deep, deep sea fishing, uh, potentially deep sea mining in the future. Mining, oil drilling. Um, luckily, they do collaborate a lot with with us scientists. Uh, they do. There's better regulation now, also for them to know. Okay, what is the impact of our activities there? Mm -hmm. yeah, so if you drill in the deep sea, for example, there will be a lot of sedimentation, and we know that that can be very bad for corals or for sponges living there. So they 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 are collaborative, but I think it's just the tip of the iceberg. When when we really start to develop these areas, yeah, that could be could interesting. Be, could be interesting. See. Could yeah. be interesting. Yeah. Uh, and here's a question I don't think you should be able to answer. 
Okay. This is from Ella. Okay. Well. Um, how does see. coral feel when you touch it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I can answer that. Um, I, I think that it won't notice that it feels anything. I think that if I touch also, sponge are the same. If I touch this sponge, you can actually see it retract. But if it really notices it, I don't think so. Why? Because they don't have a brain. They don't have a way to sense pain, for example, like we do. They do have, um, what I say, if you touch them, they will, they will notice and they will retract or they, uh, they will uh, protect themselves. But I really don't think that uh, they will feel pain. And, and why, I mean, you're, you're advised not to touch coral. Why, yeah. why, why is that? Because in the end, you will kill it by touching it, right? And then even if it doesn't feel pain, I don't think it wants to die. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so um, and, you know, so, so how, do, how does coral feel when you touch it? Yeah. It shouldn't be able to feel... It's an, uh, you know what? That was my, that is my answer still. But I have to also be honest and say, I'm not sure. We never, I mean, how do you test pain in, in, a, in a coral? It's actually, I mean, maybe she should, you know, there develop uh, a study. A study uh, of, yeah. of, of, of yeah. whether coral feels. Um, but also, maybe she was meaning, what does it feel, how does it feel like to us? Because it's got these harpoon cells in it. Is it a sting? Oh. Uh, yeah, well, um, <laughs> it's, it's different, difficult to say because uh, some... Um, Types of corals and some types of sponges uh, have different uh, defense mechanisms. There's actually one sponge, for example, that is called the "Do Not Touch Me" sponge. Yes, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, and if you do, you will feel it that you have touched it, and then you will recognize it the the next time, Sorry. and you will not do that again. Yeah. You, have you done that? I did, but I probably was not aware because sometimes we are working, and then yeah, you can you know accidentally cut your arm. arm yeah. yeah, and but there's many things that actually sting in the water: uh, soft corals, uh, jellyfish. Uh, it's their defense, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Poppy would like to know: um, Have you seen much plastic rubbish on the reef? We not so much on the reef, because most black plastic will not sink down. But we do see, um, and that's, that's a sad sight, we do see a lot of plastics on the beaches. And not on, on every beach, it's, it's mostly the beaches where, you know, there's a lot of plastic coming from wherever around the world, you know, to wash ashore. Um, on the reef, uh, it's more that you sometimes see, like, bottles, bottled beer bottles or other bottles, um, and, yeah, glass, but not so much plastic. So that that's so it's it, it because it's been in the news a lot. So it's obviously high in people's mind, but but here not and on the, when you're down the reef, not such a, as big a problem as as you know maybe on some of those other, maybe other in, areas. Maybe in other places uh, yeah. in the world, I, I wouldn't know, but um, uh, here it's 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 not yet uh, a problem. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> Some positive yeah. news. Yes, right. some positive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Salman would like to know: Did you always want to work with corals or on the coral reef? I did. Yeah. Well, I did. Well, how did that happen? Well, um, it started when I was really, really young, um, and my neighbour called uh, Willem. I called him Uncle Willem. Was my neighbour. He was a coral diver, really? and he used to you know, show me pictures of the reef and he gave me a book with underwater life and he even gave me a piece of coral. Many, many loud anymore, yeah, but back many, then many in the back 70s, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. When people didn't know any better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgive him. But um, uh, so I was interested from a young age. Uh, I started diving when I was 14, 15 and back, back at, uh, the, this was like uh, in the 1990s. Um, you could only dive uh, after you were turning 60. So I had to wait for a long time. Uh, I learned how to dive. I went to study biology and the, the plan was to try and find some internship combining diving and tropics and coral reef. And I managed to find it here and I, I'm very happy about that. Yeah. And you've been coming back, how long have you been coming to Curacao So for? This, this is almost 20 years ago. 20 years? Yeah. And I started as a student, then I came back for like a four-year uh, study, a PhD, it's called a PhD, 
and then now I hope to be here every year for a couple of weeks to do some work. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is a great question from from Swole's Swole's Vile School, who would like to know how many species of sponge would actually feel like a bathroom sponge. <laughs> um, how many species of sponge are there? There are described. Um, there's a website where you can where you can tell, and the, and every day there's there's more species added to it. There there's described about nine to ten thousand. And described species. means that a scientist has sat a down and, uh, and said, "This is what yeah. it looks like. This is Clearly. Some, this is a different species. We've got some DNA. Yeah. This is not a monkey, but it's uh, a dog. Yeah, yeah. So this is actually how you should see it. We we are referring to it as sponges, but. I mean, basically, the difference between this stone sponge from 200 meter and that cave sponge from uh, 10 meters is like a bird and a, and a, and a reptile. Wow. Uh, so, in total, there's estimated to be uh, 25,000 different species of sponge. And to put it in perspective, uh, we are mammals, just like a cat and a dog and a monkey and, a, and an elephant. Uh, there's only 5,000 species of mammals on the world, so there's, right? there's many more species of sponges than, than there are mammals. Now, which ones do feel like SpongeBob? <laughs> uh, I don't think these will feel. Do you no, think that these no, will feel no, like not, not so good. I mean, the, maybe, yeah, maybe the, 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 <laughs> the, the brown one on the end. There. These ones, do you want to? No, 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 I'm okay that, actually. I'm, that. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the the real bath sponge exists. It doesn't Does it? exist, yeah. It's actually called also the the official sponge, o Spongia officinalis. Ah. And that is the bath sponge. That, that I'm sure that the bath sponge will really feel like SpongeBob. It's SpongeBob. It is SpongeBob. Yeah. And it's there, and, and you find it in Turkey, Greece, um, around the Mediterranean. Around the Mediterranean. Um, uh, Florida. Um, I think Miami they had uh, they had huge uh, farmings. Yeah. Ah, okay. In the 80s. In the 80s. Yeah. yeah. But now banned or just or um, not shouldn't do it, but still happens a little bit. So again, uh, humans come into play. So we started to culture these uh, because we needed a lot of yeah. bath sponges. Um, and then uh, there uh, there was a disease. There, so there was a disease amongst these bath sponges, and they were almost all uh, killed. Um, luckily, they, uh, some of them survived, and it was uh, sort of over the, the, the whole world. Um, and some, then they started to ban using bath sponges. So they still are there. They're actually uh, coming back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, if you are in Greece or Turkey, you can probably find them on markets. Not really sure if, if that's legal or not. But um, yeah, you can see them, uh, that they're still there. Uh, just to go to go back a little bit to to your, you know, to getting to be as lucky as you, you know, working yeah, on the reef and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, what subjects do you have to be good at at school? Ooh, everything. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not very good in languages. I don't think you need languages to become a marine biologist, let's say. But but what, if you want yeah. to become a journalist, for example, writing about the coral reef, you better, you know do languages in, 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 in school. So it depends a little bit of what you want to do. If you want to become a biologist, probably you need to learn your chemistry. Yeah. Uh, biology. Physics, biology. Maths? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, and where, where does computing and coding come into these things? Is, is that growing as a, as a role that do you sort of you need to be able to, for, for analysis or automations of... of I think that, that that's what they now say, eh, that the new biologists are uh, in fact uh, uh, computer programmers. So what we do more and more is using techniques where we uh, generate uh, a lot of data at the same time. Uh, millions of data points. We used to generate only a few data by ourselves, uh, by writing down things, and now the computer will generate millions of data points. You need uh, computer programmers, they call them with a fancy word, a bioinformatic. Yep. Uh, you need them to uh, make sense out of biological data. So in fact, it's really true that if you are uh, a computer geek and you're really into computers, you can actually uh, do uh, coral reef uh, work. 
and you Why can not? come come here and, and sure. work as a collaborative yeah. team and sure yeah we are looking actually we're we are really looking for people that are good in, in programming and computers it's a bit of a problem because it's such a new area that me as a as a teacher I also teach at the university uh, we don't have that expertise so it's very difficult for us to teach you know the the, the students yeah um, it, because it goes so fast hey, the change change the change is fast and we've yeah. got um, just just to, uh, very sadly we're, we're, we're pretty well out of time um, but rich um, just to, to sign us off today, yeah. um, in which ocean is the coral reef more damaged and at risk? Ooh, wow, this is a good uh, closure. I think fairly said that the Caribbean have been the first reefs to, to get hit. Uh, already maybe 30, 40 years ago, it started with some diseases, with the fact that the sea urchins disappeared because of a disease. Uh, because there was a lot more human activity around here than, for example, the Great Barrier Reef or other more like Hawaii and the oceanic reefs on the Indo-Pacific side. However, what we see, and that's also something positive to change uh, for change, is that we can see here also examples of how reefs after 20, 30 years really re re recuperate. They, they, okay. they, they start to probably change a bit in how they look compared to 30 years ago, but they really start to also come back at some places. And now, sadly, the Great Barrier Reef, uh, the past two, three years, had severe bleaching events and um, not fun. Um, so, you know, it's, it's difficult to say. I would say that all reefs are a bit threatened, but you can also say that hopefully they have a little bit of resilience and they, they have a bit of fighting spirit to, uh, to come back. And it's up to us really, because without disturbances, without storms, without bleaching events, we, there is, as you say, here in the Caribbean on Curacao, evidence that the, the reef will re regrow. Yeah. So it's up to us what kind of future we're going to put these, yeah, these amazing well, ecosystems through. One of the reasons why uh, things are starting to come back here is that it has been a while, fingers crossed, that there was a hurricane here. And it, you, there, there, there were always hurricanes here. It, millions of years ago, there were hurricanes here. But it's the frequency that matters. So we had a period of, a, of uh, every four years, we had a major storm here. And then the reef cannot survive. Um, now, the last storm was already maybe eight years ago. And then you see that a reef actually can grow back quite, quite fast. So I think it's also important to, to notice these positive things. However, we cause by climate change, by heating up the earth, that in the future, the chances of more and more storms become higher. So a message out here really is that doing what you can to, to keep the temperatures down, yep. to change your behaviors yes. um, on an individual community and, and national, even global, global level is really, really important. If we want these amazing beautiful natural wonders to be here for future Le generations. Learn, learn about water. Learn that they are your climate buffer. Learn that almost all food, all oxygen, everything we need to live is in water. And it's really important that we keep that water clean. Brilliant. <laughs> put, put your head beneath the surface. Find out more. Thank you so much, Jasper, again, for, for being part of Coral Live. It's been great having you Thanks um, here. Thanks so very much for having me. Uh, really, really good. Uh, thank you. Also, we've got Ben who's just, just w w w watching down here. Uh, it's been wonderful having you introduce us to the, to the wonderful world of sponges above and below the surface. Um, really special stuff. Uh, so thank you. Um, thank you so much uh, for watching. Um, it's been a great day of broadcast from the Kamabi Research Station here in Curaçao. AXA Coral Live will be returning on Thursday um, when we have Dr. Valerie Chamberlain talking to us about adaptation, coral adaptation. Um, and we will also be looking at streamlined sharks. We're looking about how some animals on the reef have, have their shape. And I think we mentioned this before, is, yeah. is, um, is, is adapted to being the, the apex yeah. predator. So oh. we've got plenty, plenty in store for you on Thursday, so tune back to us then. Until then, uh, it's goodbye from Curacao. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.